Good evening, America. I'm Joan London. And I'm Charles Gibson. Next week, is your life zipping by faster than you'd like? Are you looking at love handles, graying hair, maybe no hair? Are your eyes going? Too tired for sex? Well, you're not alone. And we've got the solutions in our special series, Fearless Aging, all next week on Good Morning America. Right now, though, stay tuned for the news. With only three days until the New Hampshire primary, the Granite State is filled with candidates, among them President Clinton. The president spent a whirlwind day campaigning in New Hampshire from the seacoast to the Monadnock region. A slew of Republican candidates also stumbling for votes here today, too. We'll show you their strategies for the final few days. Join us. All the news, weather, and sports is coming up next. The American Broadcasting Company, ABC. You're watching WMUR-TV, Manchester. Welcome to Powerball, America's biggest jackpot game, with your chance to win multi-million dollar prizes. Hi everybody, Mike Pace with you. Five million dollars our jackpot tonight. That's because we had a jackpot winner on Wednesday of nearly 34 million. These folks picked up $100,000 a piece. There are more ways to win and more winners when you play Powerball. So stand by, good luck. Check those numbers carefully. Here we go. We have 35, number 44. There's number 7. Of course, the Powerball still to come. There is 15. And the last white ball, number 1. Number 1. The Powerball can be the big payoff. Here it is, number 44. A quick review. Good luck. 35, 44, 7, 15, and number 1. The Powerball is 44. If we don't give it away, look for a $10 million jackpot on Wednesday. Thanks for playing. President Clinton winds up a whirlwind tour through the Granite State. Some new support for Republican Senator Bob Dole. And the rest of the GOP candidates work to separate themselves from the pack. Live from the WMUR Broadcast Center, Kathy Craig and Eric Reed with the weekend sports wrap-up. This is New Hampshire's News 9 Weekend Report. Good evening, everyone. Amidst the fury of last-minute campaigning among Republican presidential candidates, the man they all want to replace, President Clinton, is doing some campaigning of his own in New Hampshire. The president spent the day crisscrossing the state. Our team coverage begins with WMUR's Terry Adler in Nashua, where tonight the president addressed local Democrats. And one time, let me win the New Hampshire primary. President Clinton tells local Democrats one reason he's here. Although it's clear this unopposed candidate has his sights on November. His campaign pitchers weren't outright at this $100 a plate affair, but they were there, targeting the eight Republicans who want the presidential seal representing them. All the old cliches, you know, tax and spend, soft on crime, weak on welfare, that it's all a bunch of bull. That was as negative as it got. Clinton's messages were noticeably positive on the deficit. I'm not against balancing the budget. We, our administration, the Democrats, the Democratic Party, cut the deficit in half alone. There is a strategy of sorts to this weekend. As Clinton continues to talk positive issues, it's fine with the White House if the Republican candidates continue to tear each other apart. The contrast is clear, and if they're going to nominate a candidate that can do battle with President Clinton, they're going to have to find some mes a message and find some vision in a hurry. That contrast may be working. This independent is now staking out Clinton's camp. I've looked at all the Republicans. I've tried to look at uh, some of the more moderate Republicans. They're all scrambling so far to the extreme right that it's impossible to support any of them. So it will be Clinton come November? Absolutely. Clinton's recipe to win over Hoffman has a few ingredients people seem to like. Lots of optimism, some more conservative views, and lots of attention to New Hampshire. In Nashua, Terry Adler, WMUR's News 9. President Clinton began his tour of the state this morning. His first stop was at the Rochester Community Center, speaking to close to 3,000 supporters. The president talked about his accomplishments and why he thinks he deserves re-election. From Rochester, the president moved on to the Monadnock region for a rally in Keene. Mr. Clinton spoke to supporters who crowded Central Square. From there, it was on to New Hampshire College in Manchester for a good old-fashioned campaign rally. From Hope, Arkansas, the President of the United States of America, number 33, Bill Clinton! 
Touchdown! A warm welcome to the team from student Jason Sabatino, just what President Clinton needed for a speech where the theme was working together. Whenever we are together as a people, we never lose. And when we permit ourselves to be divided, we defeat ourselves. We must solve these problems and meet these challenges together. But there were some not on the same team. AIDS activists heckling the president, Wouldn't saying he like was all words, no action. The president was quick to drown them out. Would you consider the most serious effort in 40 years to give health care coverage to all Americans, including people with AIDS? Action, not words. From the campaign playbook, the president talked about preserving school loans, his national service project, and the environment. He also told the Granite Staters to appreciate their primary. Although he faces no real contest on the ballot, President Clinton says he does have opponents. They are cynicism and apathy. But for people to go around and say, it doesn't matter what I do, doesn't matter how I vote, won't make any difference. And President Clinton hopes voters will make a difference in November, too. I want you to be with me because I will be with you as we go together into the future to meet our challenges. President Clinton wasn't alone in pitching himself to New Hampshire voters. Republican Senator Bob Dole stumped for votes today with the support of former New Hampshire Governor John Sununu. And sources tell News 9 that Dole will soon receive the endorsement of former presidential candidate and Texas Senator Phil Graham. WMUR's Amanda Ober caught up with Bob Dole on the campaign trail. In the ongoing battle to plow his way out of the pack, Senator Bob Dole helped clear the driveway of the New Hampshire State Senate president. Next, it was on to the home of former White House Chief of Staff John Sununu. There, Dole denied he's been running a smear campaign against his opponents, namely Pat Buchanan. You said yesterday that you were going to take the positive road from right. here out between now and Tuesday, but you did just release some fresh ads with Governor Merrill that are attacking your opponents. It's Governor Merrill evaluating the candidates. Nothing negative about that. I, th I haven't seen the ad, but I've heard about it. There was a slight coup for Dole this morning. Sununu, who helped engineer Dole's New Hampshire defeat in 1988, apparently has come over to the senator's camp. I'm not endorsing, but uh, I am going to cast a vote for experience on Tuesday, and uh, it doesn't take much reading between the lines which way that goes. But no matter how many prominent Republicans Senator Dole wins in these final days, it's still the voters of New Hampshire he needs to win. And just like in Iowa, many say negative campaigning has them turned off and tuned out. Instead of listening to all of them more thoroughly, I don't care for the ones that are doing it, so I kind of shut them off before really giving them a chance. That was Amanda Ober reporting. Still to come on the Weekend Report, the rest of the Republican presidential hopefuls take to the campaign trail, hoping to pull away from the pack. And Nick will be in with a forecast, coming up next. I went to the Saturn retailer and got a used Saturn. They treated me like I was buying a new Saturn. They really do. They revolutionized the way of buying a car. They checked out 150 different things. Most car dealers wouldn't do that. There was no pressure. The vultures weren't swooping at the Saturn dealer. <laughs> They're like real people. They were pleasant. Honest, straightforward, and fair. I'm on a first name basis with them. I bought my used Saturn from... Rodney. Ron. Ron. Lou. Charles. It was Dave. He's the first salesman I've ever trusted. Friends, have you noticed? All the career politicians have suddenly taken the new new taxi pledge. But only one man fought every tax hike of the last 15 years. Only one. When President Bush raised taxes, I gave up my career, gave up my job to come to New Hampshire to oppose him. No one stood with us then, but they all sound like us now. I've never walked away from you. Stand by me now. We need a leader who says what he means and means what he says. Just how liberal is Lamar Alexander? As governor of Tennessee, he raised taxes and fees more than 50 times. He increased the sales tax 85%, and he doubled state spending. Lamar Alexander even signed a bill allowing violent criminals to be eligible for parole after serving less than half of their prison sentence. Liberal on taxes, liberal on spending, and too liberal on crime. Lamar Alexander, he's not what he pretends to be. In honor of Washington's birthday, your Honda dealers are doing some cutting of their own. And now, 
now you can get 3.9% APR financing for 48 months on all 96 Accords. The Washington's Birthday Celebration, going on now at your Honda dealer. A crowded day on the presidential campaign trail as candidates enter into the home stretch leading up to Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. Former Tennessee Governor Lamar Alexander was on the seacoast earlier today. In While New there, Hampshire, he took swipes at his White House and fellow White House contenders and the latest round of negative campaign ads. Alexander said he was trading in hip boots. He was trading in boots he bought earlier in the campaign for hip boots because mudslinging between the candidates has gotten worse. Alexander is trying to convince voters that Senator Bob Dole is too old, Pat Buchanan is too extreme, and he is the only one who can beat President Clinton. I think I have new ideas. Senator Dole doesn't have very many ideas, and Mr. Buchanan has the wrong ideas. Conservative commentator Pat Buchanan was also on the seacoast today, with polls placing him and Lamar Alexander in a close race for second. Buchanan kept pressing his campaign themes. First, he lashed out at Alexander and his tenure as President Bush's education secretary. Then he took on Senator Bob Dole, criticizing his support of the GATT and NAFTA trade agreement. But abortion was a subject that drew the loudest response from the crowd. Let me tell you where I stand. I'm going to San Diego. I personally will keep this Republican Party pro-life. And I'll tell you what. Millionaire candidate Steve Forbes visited Nashua, once again pushing his main campaign theme of the flat tax. He wasn't alone as he stumped for votes today. He was joined by his wife and daughter, who have rarely been seen on the campaign trail. Forbes said his family is the reason why he is running. In the sense that uh, America is always looking to the future, always wanting to provide uh, more opportunities for the next generation. Is the White House where you all want to end up? Yes. <laughs> really and truly, life in the fishbowl? <laughs> You'll put up with it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for the country, good for us. Revved up and ready to go, Senator Dick Luger hit the ground running this morning. Luger began his day at That's Manchester Harley-Davidson, where he toured the facility and talked about his commitment to keeping jobs here in the United States. Luger would criticize Pat Buchanan's protectionist stance, saying this is no time for building draw bridges around America. As for his campaign, the Indiana senator says he's feeling confident about next week. Confidence is a little more than we can say about the weather for the Tuesday for the primary. Uh, that's right. Uh, we do have a wintry mix headed our way. I'll let you know what that means in the forecast, Kathy. All right. We'll be back with the forecast in just a moment. And still to come, the Wildcats are back on home ice tonight. Eric will have that and more coming up in four. This is the Bank of New Hampshire Financial News Minute. I'm Karen Brown. Are you paying more taxes than you should? It's easy to lose track of deductions when dealing with piles of paperwork. Some frequently overlooked tax deductions are mileage traveled for charitable work, charitable contributions made through payroll deductions, and penalties for premature savings withdrawals or mortgage prepayments. If you work more than one job and earn more than $61,200, you could be paying too much in Social Security taxes. Don't forget to claim a credit on your return. And if you have an unemployed adult child living at home, or if you care for an elderly parent, you may be entitled to claim them as a dependent. Consult your tax preparer or read through a comprehensive tax preparation book to make sure you haven't missed other opportunities to trim your taxes. This Financial News Minute is brought to you by Bank of New Hampshire, with 29 offices to serve you. Across New Hampshire, it's Lamar Alexander, running a positive campaign with fresh ideas and the vision to beat Bill Clinton. But Bob Dole is running a negative campaign. It's Washington politics as usual. The fact is, Governor Alexander kept Tennessee taxes the fifth lowest in America. Lamar Alexander's record is so good, it has earned him friends across New Hampshire, even in other campaigns. New leadership with a positive vision and fresh ideas. For President Lamar Alexander. It's a price shocker. It's a price chopper. Lungo's Furniture and Bedding's President's Week Sale. Brand name home furnishings at price shocking price chopping reductions. No exceptions, no kidding. There's no better time to buy. The latest looks, the lowest prices. Shop Lungo's huge one acre showroom. Plus, no interest, no payments for six months on anything you buy with your good credit. Lungo's Furniture and Bedding's President's Week Sale. It's a price shocker. Shop Lungo's today.
I, I think, you know, there isn't any other candidate who had the kind of experience that he's got. I'm impressed that he's a farmer and still remains a farmer. In fact, that he was mayor, and I'm impressed that he joined the Navy. My heart is in the Navy. I think that he is a good husband, good grandfather. Some people are talking about having experience running the business and all that. He's done it second nature, you know. He's Dick Luger is a foreign policy expert. Uh, he is the most qualified person in the United States today to be president. Do you think the politicians are listening to us? Over 80% of us want English declared the official language. We want to get tough on trade and protect American jobs. And we want our government to run like a business. You've heard the politicians talk and talk, but what have they done? I'm a businessman, not a politician or lawyer. I'm the only candidate for president who can make the changes we want. But I really need your help. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Now, your guaranteed forecast with Nick Morganelli. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. We do have uh, a cold night out there. The winds are still uh, oh, light to moderate right now. Wind chills about zero and below zero in many places as we look from our 9x cam at downtown Manchester, the city lights, temperature 20 degrees under starlit skies, humidity 38 percent, it's very dry outside. I need a glass of water myself right now. Winds are north at five, that gives us the wind chill of 18, but many areas have wind chills well below zero. The almanac for today, high 24, low 20, normal 33 and 11, these are for Concord now, and if you average all those numbers together, the 24 and the 20, the 33 and the 11, you come out right around 22, so it's a pretty normal day, although we're above normal for the low and below normal for the high. And there are your records set back way in the 1800s. Tough to break those ones. Here's some more temperatures for you. 20 from the seacoast back towards Manchester. 14 in New Dorm. 17 right now in Concord. 11 out in Keene. And uh, 10 degrees in Lebanon. 16 up in Montpelier. So generally, everybody's in the teens right now and they will be dropping into the low teens, but more clouds will be moving in. We do have some scattered light snow showers right back in here, but most of it is concentrated in West Virginia and Southern Ohio, and uh, they will be moving offshore to our south, but we will get some flurries, perhaps a dusting of snow overnight. As we go from New York, we look uh, northward and to the clear skies, but westward to uh, Washington, Pittsburgh, we notice that we do have some snow showers out here, and they'll be looking at some lake effect snows for the next couple of days. And as we move uh, further westward towards Chicago and Indianapolis, we do have some more snow showers there. But a lot of these are very, very light, and they will be uh, diminishing and weakening as they move towards us. We have a big high pressure system sitting right over us right now, so we will have uh, mostly clear skies tonight with some clouds coming in later. And this is the big batch of clouds right in here. Computer's taking a little, little long tonight, isn't it, to do this? Well, you know, computers get slow sometimes, too. It's been working overtime today as we were in early this morning covering the storm for you. So we notice uh, this batch of clouds. Then this clear sky right in here is our weather coming in from Monday. And then there's another batch of clouds further to the north and west. And that system will be coming in here for Tuesday for voting day. And this could pose some problems uh, with snow changing to rain. I'll get to that in just a minute. We'll put the cloud loop into motion for you. And you can notice that this system right in here moving mostly to the south, but there are lots of clouds that will keep our temperatures up tonight. Here are the clear skies for Monday and the next system coming in for Tuesday. So far, by tomorrow, we'll have a weak system moving offshore. Nothing to worry about. High pressure coming over us for Monday, and then we'll be warming up as warm air tries to come up here and putting uh, snow and rain in the forecast for us. Winter cold locked in the east, and as we move this jet stream, we'll notice these two flip-flopping here and we'll get some spring warmth in here by midweek. Here's the forecast. We'll check it out. Clouding up tonight, some flurries. See one, single numbers north, teens south, and uh, for tomorrow, we'll have uh, morning flurries uh, zero to just a dusting afternoon sunshine near 20 for tomorrow night. Clear skies, the last cold one for a while in the single digits. Here's the five-day forecast. Lots of sunshine in near 20 for Monday, and uh, there you go, a wintry mix coming in for Tuesday with temperature up near 36 degrees and look at that wednesday rain showers with snow up north 48 degrees here in southern new hampshire 48 sounds Warming good up. i don't know about rain showers but 48 sounds great okay well <laughs> get your umbrella and enjoy the warmth <laughs> thanks nick you're welcome eric's in the sports what do you got for us tonight? well we'll take a trip over to unh check out the hockey team uh wild one had to come from behind against 
and UMass Amherst. We've got the college hoop, and we've got auto racing. It's that time of year again. All sorts of stuff. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. He's held public office a total of 44 years. Will retire with a $2 million congressional pension. Voted to raise taxes. $214 billion in 1982, $58 billion in 1983, billions more in 89, 91, and 92. Voted to raise the federal debt ceiling, now $5 trillion. Now he tells us he'll balance the budget and cut our taxes. What do you think? I'm Casey Kasem with your four dealers' number one hits. Together, they're five of the top ten best-selling vehicles in America. Let's hear from these great leaders now. Uh, gentlemen, I meant the cars. Get low, 4.8% financing or $1,000 cash back on Ford Windstar. 4.8 could save you over $2,700. A thousand cash back could mean no money down. Hurry, the great percent event ends soon. For America's number one hits, I'm Casey Kasem. And for President's Day savings, see your New England Ford dealer today. NBC News called it a success story that improved health care. At Forbes magazine, Steve Forbes started a new idea, a form of medical savings accounts. People choose their own doctors, costs are lower, and individuals keep the money they save. I'm Steve Forbes. Medical savings accounts can improve care, cut waste, and protect Medicare without reducing your benefits. You control your health care, not the politicians. Steve Forbes, conservative for president. It's Washington's birthday, and the party's at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. They're celebrating with 4.8% financing or $1,000 cash back when you buy a new 96 Mercury Villager. Or no money down when you lease a loaded Villager. Look at everything you get for no money down and only $3.44 a month. Dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, rear seat air, and more. With the minivan that's equipped like a luxury car. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer now, before the sale is history. Imagine yourself in a Mercury now. What have New Hampshire taxpayers just learned? That as governor of Tennessee, Lamar Alexander proposed what would have been the first income tax in Tennessee history. But Tennessee taxpayers said no. As governor of Tennessee, he raised taxes and fees more than 50 times. He increased the sales tax 85%, and he doubled state spending. Lamar Alexander's record? Liberal on taxes. Liberal on spending. Lamar Alexander, a tax and spend liberal who's not what he pretends to be. Now, today's sports with Eric Green. We can all rest a little bit easier tonight, for man has beaten machine. Gary Kasparov closed out his chess match against the IBM supercomputer, winning today. I can bring you highlights from that match or highlights from tonight's UNH hockey game. I vote for hockey. It is, of course, the primary season. UMass Amherst at the Whittemore Center tonight. UNH down 4-2 after 2 until Eric Boganicki with the wind up in the fire on the backhand 4-3 UMass on top then some much needed luck that goes off a UMass skate and past Brian Regan Derek Becker gets credit for the goal four all after regulation scoreless after overtime so we go to the shootout one point on the line in the shootout and UMass picks it up they win the shootout 2-1 getting that extra point the teams play in Amherst on Monday College hockey scoreboard tonight. St. A's loses to Middlebury New England College with an overtime win over Norwich. Framingham State knocked off Plymouth State. New Hampshire College had a tie tonight as well. The Bruins getting a late start tonight in Vancouver, and they have fallen behind out west. 1-0 Canucks on top. That game in the first period. Celtics off tonight. Boston at Denver tomorrow night. Top 25 college hoop today. The top dogs from UMass made it 25 wins without a loss this season. They beat this number 10, the Virginia Hopis Tech, to on the road, 74-58 the final. Marcus Camby put in 31 points the as the Minutemen handle what was to be their toughest conference test to of the season. Camby. Local hoop, Dartmouth made it a road trip split by beating Columbia tonight. It's on to Princeton and Penn for two very big games next weekend. St. Anselm made it 16 wins in a row, a 23-point win over Stonehill today on the hilltop. This one, St. A's wasn't too happy afterwards. Said it was a sloppy game, but plays like that, like John O'Connell to Derek Clough. Look at O'Connell's reaction underneath. They got into it. They got a little bit pumped up, and they come away with a big win. They got it any way they could. And the foul. St. A's has won 16 in a row. On the local scoreboard, Dartmouth gets 
20 points from Shea Lonergan in the win. St. A's with the big win. Scott Smith, 25 points for New Hampshire College. Colby Sawyer edges Nichols. Plymouth State does the same to Western Connecticut. Women's College basketball tonight. Kristen Scoglin did all she could. She put in 26 points for St. Anselm, but they fall to Stonehill by 10. Kristen, the only hawk in double figures. Stonehill erased a seven-point halftime deficit to get the win. Women's scoreboard tonight. Dartmouth gets 23 from Sally Annis in the win. Stonehill wins. Colby Sawyer wins. Plymouth State loses to Western Connecticut. And Sacred Heart knocks off New Hampshire College. The top high school wrestlers in the state gathered at Salem High and Timberlane Regional today for the state class championships. The big schools, Class L at Salem. That's what you're seeing right here. Of course, Timberlane looking to defend their title on their home mats. We're still looking for results. Looks like a late night in Class L and a late night in Salem. We'll bring you some more highlights and get you those results tomorrow night. At 6 o'clock at the New England Collegiate Wrestling Championships, the host Plymouth State in third place overall. The finals take place tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. If today's Goodies 300 Grand National Race is any indication, tomorrow's Daytona 500 should be wild. Demolition Derby at Daytona. This is just one of the many mishaps that took place today on the tri-oval. But in the end, look at the finish here. Dale Jarrett trying to get around Steve Grissom. He can't do it. Checkered flag flies. There'll be another one flying tomorrow at the Super Speedway. Dale Earnhardt on the pole. Ernie Irvin on the outside pole for tomorrow's Daytona 500. The year is all planned out for Dartmouth grad Bob Campanet. He graduates from medical school in Minnesota in the spring, begins his residency in the fall, and in between will run in the Olympic marathon. He's the top American hope after winning the U.S. Olympic trial today in cold Charlotte, North Carolina. Two hours, 12 minutes, 44 seconds, enough to beat Mark Coogan and Keith Brantley, who also make the team. It was 25 degrees at the start in Charlotte today. Campton wins $100,000 for finishing first. I think that goes towards a lot of tongue depressors for the doctor or to pay off his student loans, one or the other. Mittens. I yeah, mittens. mittens when it's 25 to run. Yeah. I can't even go outside when it's like that. He runs like 26.2 miles, Kathy. <laughs> Some people are just tougher than us. Tougher than me. All right. Thank us. you very much. It's a team. <laughs> That's it tonight for the weekend report. Thank you for joining us. Please tune in to News 9 Sunday tomorrow morning at 10, and we'll have complete coverage from the presidential campaign trail coming up tomorrow night at 6. Until then, have a good night. New Hampshire viewers rely on WMUR's News 9 for the latest news and information than any other news source. Here's a fresh breeze, the new Plymouth Breeze. Just think of it as a very affordable, high-performance machine. At Chrysler Plymouth, New England, we'll show you what's new. It's a pleasure to be here with Lamar to endorse him, uh, to take on the position of chairman of his campaign. He is the best man and now the only man in the race who can defeat Bill Clinton. Uh, for Lamar, not everything flows through Washington. And his notion of stronger local communities, of putting an emphasis on individuals, on families, on churches, on schools. Uh, so I'm here as a conservative supporting the person who is, I believe, the true conservative in this race. Do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? Sure you know the Muffin Man, the same man who makes his donuts fresh day and night wouldn't make his muffins any other way. Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> now when you buy a large cup of our fresh brewed coffee, you get any one of our delicious muffins for just 25 cents, only at Dunkin' Donuts. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Available for immediate delivery at Dreher Holloway. All BMW models. Leasing and financing options available. Dreher Holloway, nine car lines, one location. The choice is simple.
For 30 years, Washington politicians have tried to run schools and failed. Test scores have dropped. Three out of four eighth graders are below grade level in math. I'm Steve Forbes. Today, local schools have to fill out 173 federal forms. Washington is out of control. We should slash federal mandates, take power away from Washington politicians, and restore control of our schools to parents. Steve Forbes for president. It's Washington's birthday, and you want cold, hard cash savings. Well, that's what you get at your New England Toyota dealer. Savings with special 1.9% APR financing for up to 36 months on Toyota Tacoma and Tough T100 trucks. But hurry, this 1.9% APR offer ends February 19th. It only happens once a year, and it's happening now. Get what you've been waiting for. Cold, hard cash savings at your New England Toyota dealer. No one knows New Hampshire like we do. Now on E.T., the Scotsmen are celebrating as Oscar honors Mel Gibson's epic. So you've got children? Well, not yet, but I was hoping that you could help me with that. And others will do battle with Braveheart, from a pig and a postman to elegant England and outer space. It's an acknowledgement of the work that went into the movie and also of the, the actual mission, Apollo 13. Jim Carrey, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, Kelsey Grammer. Who, me? A cast of clowns proves that dumb is in in Hollywood. Oh, God, I hurt a little, but I'm all right. And only we have the new king can of the class clowns, Woody Harrelson. I feel like such poor white trash around me, which is appropriate because I am. You look a little bit like poor white yeah. trash. <laughs> Two guys step into the shoes of Jay and Dave. The story of the late night war. I can't remember what my hair used to look like. Someone on the crew said, you know, he's left-handed. You know, after I did, you know, I went, what? For sexy John Enos, it's a story of man bites dog. I'm gonna bite you. Oh. And for one lucky young model, it's a Cinderella story. But Cinderella's wearing her skivvies. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of me. And now that the nominations are in, we're playing odds makers as all Hollywood looks ahead to the Oscars. To be nominated is such a huge honor that, you know, that's all I think about now. It makes me feel very proud. Bordering on the smug, actually. I'm just sort of thinking, get me to the champagne. <laughs> this is Entertainment Tonight for the third weekend in February 1996. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Goins. And I'm Julie Moran. Thanks for joining us.